there's been a lot of inconsistency with my tennis over the last couple of years. But Well, you heard it from the man himself, but that still leaves us with more questions. What happened to him? I mean, at some point, he was on levels close to the big three, and sometimes he ranked even below the top 100. Well, one way to find out. As a teenager, Murray's tremendous talents were initially developed by Leon Smith. In 1999, at the age of only 12, a young Murray burst onto the radar by winning the coveted Orange Bowl title, defeating players almost two years older. He won it again at the age of 14, becoming one of only nine tennis players in the tournament's 70-year history to do it, alongside Jimmy Connors, Jennifer Capriati, and Monica Seles. The kid was special. By the time Murray hit 16, he was able to win on the Futures Tour, and that showed he could win in the professional game. Following that, Murray began his professional career shortly after, in 2005. And a year later, he clinched his first ATP title, defeating 11th-ranked Leighton Hewitt. He made his first Grand Slam quarter-final at Wimbledon the next year, before reaching his first final at the US Open the following year. We can't deny, he had a great start to his career. Andy Murray defeated Nadal for the first time during the US Open semi-finals in New York. With this victory, he became the first British player to reach a major final since Greg Rusedski in 1997. Unfortunately for him, he lost in straight sets to Federer in his first Grand Slam final. In that year, there was something about Murray as he was quite unusual. You see, back then, most male players played a machismo style. They tried to hit as hard as they could. However, compared to the other players, Murray used to hit softer than them. This meant his opponents could tee off on his shots a little more easily. But he didn't mind. He moved quickly. He seems to like it when his opponents attack him. In those days, Murray used to stand 6 to 10 feet behind the baseline, and his Venus flytrap tactic of not striking hard and allowing his opponents to strike first was part of it. He would occasionally change the tempo, slice, slice, topspin, and so on. All of this variation in pace would throw some players off, causing them to mishit the shot. Murray began the 2009 season by successfully defending his title in the Qatar Open in Doha, where he defeated Andy Roddick in straight sets. The ninth title of his budding career, he also won his 10th career title in Rotterdam, defeating number one Nadal in three sets. Okay, set match Murray. Two sets to one. During this time, Murray attained the best ever open era rating for a British male when he reached the number three ranking on May 11, 2009. He managed to remain consistent in slams and won a few more Masters titles. Murray became the first British man to win a Grand Slam championship in 76 years, with Fred Perry taking the trophy in 1936. His win in Flushing Meadows also created other records for him. The final featured the longest ever tiebreak in a US Open final, and the match was the joint longest in history. History is made at the US Open. He also became the first man in history to win both Olympic gold and the US Open in the same calendar year. Sadly, by 2017, Andy Murray started to struggle. Twenty seventeen was a year Andy Murray would never forget in a hurry. How do you explain going number one to outside the top ten spots within twelve months? Andy started the year ranked number one. However, he missed the Canadian Open and the Cincinnati Masters due to a hip injury, which caused him to lose his number one status to Rafael Nadal. Due to his injury, he was forced to withdraw from the twenty seventeen U.S. Open two days before the event began. It's uh, it's too sore for me to. To, to win the tournament and ultimately that's what, what I was here to, to try and do so unfortunately uh, I won't be playing here this year. Making it the first Grand Slam tournament he has missed since the 2013 French Open and then withdrew from the Asian hardcourt swing stating that he would certainly not compete in another professional tournament in 2017. As a result of his inactivity his rating dropped dramatically to number 16 his lowest since May 2008. By 2018, Andy withdrew from the Brisbane International and Australian Open due to a hip injury. He explained rehab as one possibility for healing in an Instagram post. He also mentioned that hip surgery was an option, but the chances of success were not as good. The Scot, who returned from back surgery in 2016 to win a third Grand Slam title and a second Olympic gold medal, sounded irretrievably depressed. Yeah, obviously had the issue with the hip over What's well, actually been? Eventually, on January 8, 2018, Andy announced on Instagram he had undergone hip surgery. In June 2018, 
He announced he would play his first ATP tournament since hip surgery at the Rosemaryland Grass Court Championships, although he later withdrew, saying he was not quite ready and wanted to be 100%. He also withdrew from Wimbledon with a heavy heart the day before the event, claiming that playing five-set matches was too soon. As a result of his withdrawal, he fell to 839th in the ATP rankings, his lowest ranking since entering the ATP rankings on July 21, 2003. Fast forward to a year later, an emotional Murray said on January 11, 2019, just before the 2019 Australian Open, that he may retire from professional tennis after struggling physically for a long period, notably with his hip ailment. That, that, that's where I would like to stop, um, stop playing. Uh, I guess he stopped seeing the light at the end of the tunnel anymore. What's this? Does that mean that uh, this might be your last tournament? Um, I don't know the gravity of the pain, but damn, I could hear the pain in his voice. He stated that he suffered from hip pain on a daily basis, which made it difficult for him to perform things such as putting on his shoes and socks. He spoke about the potential of a second hip operation, but expressed doubt that it would be a feasible option to prolong his career, only allowing him to have a better quality of life and be free of pain. Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal, Novak Djokovic, Juan Martín del Potro, Carl Edmund, and Billie Jean King expressed tribute to Murray upon his announcement. Bob Bryan urged him to have the Birmingham hip surgery he had in August 2018, which involved placing a cobalt chrome metal cap over the femur and a matching metal cup in the active bellum. It was a conservative bone-saving alternative to a traditional total hip replacement. Brian informed Murray that the BHR would improve his quality of life and may help him return to the professional tennis tour. And on January 29, 2019, Murray announced on Instagram that he had undergone hip resurfacing surgery in London and hoped that it would be the end of his pain. Rather than the more common total hip replacement, he had a metal Birmingham hip resurfacing device on his right side that it was designed to allow greater activity after surgery. His implant was a metal-on-metal -metal device built to last over 20 years. As an alternative to total hip replacement, the BHR treatment was created to preserve more of the original bone and restore the joint's natural shape, enabling high levels of activity and a wider range of motion. On February 4, 2019, in an interview with The Times, Professor Derek McKinn, who pioneered the BHR implant and operation, provided the opinion that Murray's chances of returning to competitive tennis were in the upper 90%. He stated in an interview on March 7, 2019, that he was now pain-free in his hip as a result of the surgery and could therefore return to competitive tennis. He returned to the professional tennis tour in June, competing in the Queen's Club Championships doubles competition with Feliciano Lopez. Andy and Lopez won the tournament and following the win, he admitted that his hip felt great and that there was no pain. Yeah, I mean, it was brilliant to just be on the court pain-free and yeah, enjoying playing. We had a we had a great match today. Really nice atmosphere. And Murray then played mixed doubles with Serena Williams at Wimbledon, where they reached the third round. Yeah. He also played men's doubles with Pierre Hughes Herbert, and they made it to the second round. After Wimbledon, Murray played in a number of ATP events, gradually increasing the level of competition. In October 2019, he went on to win his first singles title since returning from injury at the European Open in Antwerp, Belgium. It was his first singles title since March 2017, and it was a significant milestone in his comeback journey. He defeated Stan Wawrinka in the final, who is also a former Grand Slam champion, a man he has often been compared with. The Scotsman's comeback was particularly impressive, given the severity of his injury. He had contemplated retirement due to the pain and limitations caused by his hip, but his determination and hard work and rehabilitation allowed him to return to the top level of tennis. While Murray has had further setbacks since his comeback, including missing the 2020 Australian Open due to a pelvic injury, he still continues to work towards regaining his form and competing at the highest level. His inspiring comeback from injury has already cemented his status as one of the greatest players in tennis history. Lucky for him, he has been injury-free for a while now, and back in December 2022, he revealed that he was going to keep competing as long as his body was in good shape. But he also added that he was one big injury away from calling time on his career. You could see the excitement on his face during the Australian Open. That's a man we love to see. Despite these challenges, Murray has continued to compete and has demonstrated that he is still capable of playing at a high level. Nobody can predict what the future holds for Murray right now, including Murray himself, as injuries and other factors can be unpredictable. However, he has shown a great deal of resilience and determination throughout his career, and it is possible that we could still see him compete for some time to come. Ultimately, only time will tell what the future holds for him and his tennis career. Whatever happens with Murray's career, one thing is for sure. He has succeeded in carving out a Hall of Fame career for himself, earning the respect of both fans and professionals. In reality, Murray had a fantastic career, but injuries prevented him from ever really reaching the standards of the big three. 
Nevertheless, he has accomplished something that none of the big three have, earning two gold medals in the Olympic singles competition. That achievement alone will always place him on an exceptional pedestal in the history books. In other news, Novak is taking all the accolades in tennis right now. Is he the GOAT? Watch this video to find out.